So this is a, a diagnostic exam I've been doing it for the last 25 years. You know, the uh, interesting study on whether the, uh, at the end of your residency is you can do a ro rotator cuff tear repair. There's also been uh, studies whether uh, the, the resident's confidence could actually match his skill. So you may want to check those uh, studies uh, too. Uh, so I'm a lateral uh, position because I grew up on the uh, uh, West Coast. And I used uh, twin anterior portals. And I think this positioning is a little bit like religion. Most of us, if we're brought up with a particular religion, tend to stay with it in some form. So I like this because of uh, suture management. And I, I put this, this video as to f with the uh, scope posteriorly. And this is Dr. Steider's exam that we started doing in, in the late 80s of going through the uh, uh, in a systematic way. So the idea is just be systematic. So here's uh, the scopes coming in posteriorly. You can see the left shoulder. And when you get in there, you can now see the, uh, the glenoid below, humeral head above, subscap, and then the biceps on your right. And that's sort of the triangle to see exactly where you're going to go uh, uh, and put in your anterior portal. You can also do this outside in. Here, this is just pushing the scope through. Originally, Lenny Johnson did this with a Wissinger rod because Dr. Wissinger, who never did a scope in his life, was visiting him and said, why don't you put, put a big rod through there to look out. The... So now you can see one, two is across the bottom. Then you you go the, into the axillary pouch and come off the glenoid. So here's the biceps tendon. So just take a good look at the biceps. You can move it, push it around, pull some of it into the joint. You can see how it, it fits up against the uh, subscapularis on your right. There's a, articles by Dr. Habermeyer on so-called pulley lesions and how there's pathology in this area. So you should understand that area, get an idea of what looks like the, the tunnel that you can see in that uh, particular uh, part. Now we're backing up. You can see the uh, the biceps anchor. We're going to hear more about uh, slaps, uh, and there's a lot of variation in the superior labrum. And now, in in terms of the biceps tendon, here you can have a split biceps. So there is uh, abnormality and pathology. Sometimes the biceps is in a sheath that you can't actually see it. It's and there's various degrees of that sheath, or you can have a bifed uh, bifed biceps tendon and there's also a, a cleft a superiorly and that's not a slap lesion so there's Dr. Detrasek did a study years ago showing that about 60 percent of the people have a loose uh, superior labrum now you swing around look at the posterior labrum usually I use two hands on the scope so it doesn't get squished out of the, the joint and you can uh, evaluate posterior inferiorly, especially in throwers with so-called uh, Kim lesion down in that, uh, that area. And now we're going to move into the axillary pouch. You can look at the uh, inferior labrum. And then you can rotate the scope up to look at the uh, axillary uh, recess, see if there's any loose bodies down in that area. Now, you have to make two moves to see the articular cartilage. If you just do it once, I think you'll miss something. So now we'll look at the glenoid. And you can look at the glenoid both for uh, the bare spot. If you have an instability, there's not much of a bare spot in, in this patient. Also, if they have osteoarthritis of the joint, I usually take a lot of photographs to, to remind the patient that they have an arthritic uh, joint. And you're using a probe, and now we're moving uh, superiorly back to where we started. And now you look up at the uh, rotator cuff in this part, the uh, supraspinatus tendon. This patient doesn't have a much of a cable. Uh, Dr. Burkhardt and I talked about uh, way, way back. Um, you can uh, probe this area. It's a little bit thinner between the anterior and posterior limb of the cable. And now you rotate the scope, uh, looking now at the uh, infraspinatus in a second here. Here we go. And then, then that drops us into the bare spot. So now you have to say, is that a bare spot or is that a hill sax lesion? So the bare spot is right up there adjacent to the, uh, the 
to the te uh, t rotator cuff tendon. Now we're coming down on the humeral head. Now here we get a good look at the humeral head and if, if you have an engaging hill sac, you can move it about to, to see what that uh, looks like in this area. And then this way you don't miss anything when you're doing your, uh, your study. And I actually have a, a graphic sheet that I use in surgery that, uh, that I record what I, how these various structures look like. So now we're coming back to this anterior superior quadrant. And there's a lot of variation in this anterior superior uh, quadrant. So this is where the variations occur uh, in the shoulder. There's the subscap. He had to name this after a Buford complex. Actually, Dr. Donnie Buford was a medical student watching him. So that's how these uh, great names start. Uh, so now you're coming back down in the inferior labrum. And you're looking at this from uh, posteriorly. You can probe here. You can put your hand in the axilla and uh, lift up with, uh, with one hand. Uh, Dr. Arlen showed how to put a roll towel in the axilla. Okay, now we'll move to looking from the front. And I think you need to really get used to doing this if that's not your, uh, your, your forte. Is, uh, and then eventually when we'll talk about instability surgery from the front. So I've used some nice Smith & Nephew cannulas for the last 25 years that you could just very easily switch from the front to the back in under 10 seconds. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can use the switching stick method. So anyways, we finally got the scope in the front. And now we're looking directly in the back. Again, since I'm uh, a lateral person to orient it with the uh, floor. And now you can uh, look up at the posterior part of the cuff and look at the uh, posterior capsule. The bicep tendon is on the left, humeral head is on the right. Now you can duck right under the bicep tendon there, look up at the cuff. So things look different, but you, you know, if you're going to be you know, and uh, 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 have a fellowship and do sports medicine shoulder surgery, you should be able to operate with, with rhythm and style and look smooth in, in what you're doing. Now you can look down at the, uh, at the anterior uh, inferior labrum there in the, in the glenohumeral uh, ligament. And then the subscap is on the right. So there's the subscap can there's two things to do. One is up above it'll it'll have the attachment. I'll show you in a minute. And the other thing is you can look down. There's the middle glenohumeral ligament with the probe, and now you just duck right in to this uh, subscapularis uh, recess. Looks like a colonoscopy, and you can start. And that's where the loose bodies hang out. So. You need to be able to look in this area or you're going to drop a loose body in there someday and, and not be able to find it. Then you'll be very frustrated and especially when you get a post-op x-ray and the patient asks you why, why that thing is still uh, there. So let me go to the next slide now. So now here's the subscapularis that's looking the same way. The subscap is there's on your right and you just internally rotate and you can get a look at the subscapularis insertion. And Dr. Field's going to talk later about the subscap. So you can just pretend the subscap doesn't exist and there's no tears there. Or you can actually take a look at it and see what make it uh, see yourself. So then there's a bursa. Sometimes I'll do a bursoscopy if, uh, on a patient before I do the glenohumeral joint or arthroscopy. So here you're looking into the bursa. Dr. Snyder's got a bunch of numbers for up there. But the idea is you should be able to be in this bursa and see what's, what's going on. And if you hug the top of the cuff, you can look in the acromion, see a ligament, see if there's some scuffing up there. You can see that looks pretty uh, pristine. Now you can, you can, 
So you decide that stuff's in your way or just kind of move the scope around a little bit, give it a little jiggle, and you'll see in a second here. Now there's been a, a marker on the rotator cuff, and you can look down on the, uh, on the top of the cuff and the little bands. You can call them shoulder plecas if you like the word pleca and uh, see what's uh, what's going on. So the, this idea is just take a few minutes to look around and see what's what you're actually dealing with um, in these uh, shoulders and have a systemic way, sorry, systematic way to do an examination. So basically wake up, look around, and have a way to record uh, what you're doing in, when you do a diagnostic uh, arthroscopy. Thank you for your attention.